Welcome, everybody, to the Crypto Mining Show. Yes, I'm sitting down today, and my camera perspective is pretty bad. It is what it is. I'm not feeling too well still. Sorry we've been out for quite a few days. I definitely miss it. But three days, I really honestly didn't even... Uh, I don't think I, I was barely conscious basically at this point, but I've been uh, pretty sick with a pretty terrible stomach virus and it actually didn't even start out as a stomach virus. It started out as just straight 104 degree fever for like three days straight um, and then uh, kind of developed from there. Anyways, let's get into that. That's that. We can cover that some other time. Let's... uh. Let's not get into it too much. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be getting into today. I'm happy to be here. Uh, if we pause, though, just be aware that that's kind of what's going on. Today, we're going to be talking about inflation, inflation, and inflation, because that's what we're dealing with, right? In the U.S., across the world, basically, uh, world economies are crumbling and it's just looking like it's going to be worse. Now, is Bitcoin going to help us out of that? Maybe, you know, may probably not in some ways. Yes, but probably not in the ways that you hoped it would. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is getting, you know, any sort of <laughs> supplies is going to be the main main concern surrounding uh, this sort of thing. And we're just going to get into it because we got to talk about it because it will affect cryptocurrency. Ethereum is losing momentum running up to the merge. This is kind of unexpected and we'll get into it more. But, you know, I was expecting Ethereum to, you know, hit that $2,000 mark running up to the merge. But due to greater macroeconomic effects, of course, like the inflation that we're talking about, and of course, the actually waning kind of trust in Ethereum. Basically, retail is starting to become aware of a lot of these things that we talk about all the time on this channel that we've been preaching for a while surrounding the merge. We're going to get into that. The merge may negatively impact DeFi protocols. And, the, and this is specifically for stable coins as well. And this is a report coming from DAP Radar. We're going to be covering that. And then we have... Essentially, due to the move to proof of stake, we have a huge risk being uh, exposed here where basically 17% of the nodes, almost 20% of the nodes that are currently online are actually illegal on the platform they're running on and could be turned off at any time. And this is a big deal because we are moving closer and closer to proof of stake and 20% of the network as it sits for proof of stake could just be flipped off due to basically, you know, terms of service on these cloud companies that are running majority of it. We also have announcements from Ethermine and Hivod regarding the merge and their final payout process. If that's what you guys are, you know, interested in, or if those pools are the pools that you're utilizing. So we'll be covering that. We have information on the RTX 4060 series as far as power consumption and a few announcements from the likes of Flux and Neoxa, Caspa, and Veriscoin. Let's get into all of that and more right after a word from today's sponsor. If you haven't signed up for uh, Crypto.com with our code yet, please do because they are keeping us alive through the bear market and I appreciate their help. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options, including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services, including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue on your investment. Investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up 
for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So first things first, Varus Coin has a new release, and it is version 0.9.4, excuse me. And essentially, it, it has a, quite a few things, but it's primarily going to be focused around public blockchain as a service. And so those are going to be things like features for NFTs and, and, and tokens and liquidity currencies and that sort of thing. So basically what you're seeing is going to be implementation of services that are similar to running on things like Ergo, Ethereum, etc., for uh, Varus coin and of course they are just releasing the software to support it and some updates for that so if you want to go run the new node you can head on over of course to their github and get it up and running there are all of the details here but I don't want to get into too much um, as far as reading all of this to you guys it's just I want to make sure you're aware that Varus coin does have some updates coming another one as an update is Caspa. Caspa has version 12.5, which will be relevant if you're solo mining. It might, you may want to upgrade. You don't have to, of course. Um, it is up to you. I don't think that this is mandatory at this time. And this one was released basically yesterday, I believe. And they added tests for hash riders. They replaced DAG Labs DNS Cedar with Wolfie's Cedar. They changed the testnet DNS Cedar and they added the RPC timeout parameter to the wallet daemon. And they added the use existing change address option to the wallet. And then you can call update pruning point if required on resolve virtual or startup. You can add missing locks or bug fixes are adding missing locks to notification listener modifications. Calculate pruning point UTXO set from acceptance data. Fix RPC client memory. A go routine leak, and that should be helpful. And fix a subtle lock on uh, uh, lock sync issues in consensus insert block. And then the mempool, retrieve stable state of the mempool, and optimize get mempool entries by addresses. And then the Caspa wallet send makes separate context for broadcast to prolong timeout. So there is the update for Caspa, and you can go update your daemon for your solo nodes if you like. Of course, be extremely careful with your wallet. Make sure that you have the seed phrase uh, basically backed up. You can go watch my guide on how to do it. Of course, over on the guide, I'll probably update the entries for the version of Caspa. I got a little bug flying around here messing with me. Of course, that's going to happen today. But, uh, you know, essentially, if you need some help getting a Caspa node up, we already have that guide up on the channel, so you can check that out. It has timestamps and a written version with screenshots as well. So every single aspect of how you could basically build out a Caspa node is, is up and ready to go for you guys. Now we have another announcement. Neoxa has a USDT pairing on Trade Ogre now. So if you want to go check that out, definitely go head on over and check it out. They have basically at this point, I think the price is sitting around point, uh, basically a third of a cent. So you can head on over there. It looks like there's a lot of buy orders out right now for about a third of a cent or a third of a penny. So, and that's based on USDT. So good to see some buy orders over there because usually, you know, with Neoxa, you do end up seeing a lot of sell orders, so I'm, uh, I think like that's a bullish sign in general. And there is always, you know, more pairings for more coins is always a positive, especially if that coin is proof of work mineable. So, I think that's good. So, other than that, let's go ahead and get into the final kind of short announcement for the day. Then we'll get into the hefty announcements. Uh, run on Flux or Flux has basically announced in a weird kind of manner that they are working on the algorithm or I guess somebody's working on maybe a either this is an algorithm change 
or this is a miner update, like a mining software update to make the algorithm run better on essentially AMD cards. So this is kind of a weird one. Uh, they tweeted a basically a screenshot of a Discord interaction from somebody named Greggy Bear in their Discord that said, thanks for uh, filling out the form above. I'll close the poll as I believe we have enough data at the moment. A hint, red cards can be just as efficient as green cards. Stay tuned. So obviously a big problem with Flux that we've talked about in the past is that essentially uh, it runs like trash on AMD GPUs. And this has been a problem with Flux, you know, in general, because once we do move over to, uh, you know, the post-merge era and Ethereum going away, you end up in a position where there's really only so many G, only so many mineable coins that AMD GPUs are efficient at, you know, Ergo to a certain extent, but even Ergo struggles, uh, Ravencoin on some, but not really. And so you just end up being on Ethereum Classic, which is getting overtaken by ASICs. So basically all of those Polaris GPUs, which we've seen like 40 something percent of all AMD GPUs are actually old Polaris RX 580 and 480 uh, GPUs, according to the Hivon stats. They're kind of just dead in the water. They're not worth anything. They don't mine anything and they don't mine anything very efficiently, you know, so especially outside of Ethereum. So this will be a really important step, I think, um, moving forward for uh, the mining community as a whole to have another option for these AMD GPUs. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to is kind of what ends up happening here. We are seeing, of course, basically some reports that the AMD cards will be functioning better. Now we have some more GPU news as well. The RTX 4060 series, they are fast and also power hungry. The rumors come from Qubit Leaks, who is supposedly sharing RTX 40 Lovelace specifications and performance claims over on his Twitter. According to the leaker, RTX 4060 Ti is pulling up to 270 to 280 watts of power while reaching 8600 score in 3D Mark time extreme. So, which is actually better than the 3080. The 4060 non-Ti gets around 6,000 points in the same test while consuming 230 to 240 watts, which is quite a lot for this class. The rumor would follow that other leakers have said, include Copite uh, 7 Kimmy, that supposedly the RTX 4060 cards are expected to be 220 watt plus design. That is quite high. Qubits also mentions that the 4060 Ti boosts up to 2600 megahertz while the 4060 goes to 2700 megahertz. Earlier tweets from the same user list the 4060 series specs as follows. The 4060 Ti supposedly equipped with the 8104-180A1 GPU and 6144 CUDA cores. This model would feature 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory clocked at 17.5 gigabits per second. The previously listed TGP was 275 watts for this class. This is an upgrade to as many cores as the RTX 3070 Ti and the two gigabyte more memory. The 4060 non-Ti gets a different AD106-300 GPU, which is why it has much fewer, fewer cores, but a higher core clock and that's pretty standard uh, across the board when we look at the design differences between lower end models and higher end models. The RTX 4060 would see a reduced memory size to 8 gigabytes and a 128 bit bus at 17 gigabits per second memory speed. If the rumor were true, then the 4060 would have less memory than the RT current RTX 3060, which is hard to believe. Except seeming, I mean, honestly, it's not hard to believe because this has been a pattern that we've been seeing with the 4080 and the 4090 as well. They're cutting down the amount of memory and the speed of the memory and not necessarily the amount, sorry, the, um, the size of the memory bus 
and the speed of the memory, which is reducing the overall memory performance. This is being done in favor of basically moving towards, you know, more L2 cache on these GPUs. And I think it's just an architectural shift across the board. Another note about this is that where most of the high bandwidth, high performance memory applications are headed to is the data center. So you're starting to see, probably we'll see really high memory bandwidth and that sort of focus on the data center side of things and not so much over here. This kind of started with the RTX uh, or, or the RX, excuse me, from Radeon 6000 series when they started playing with the Infinity Cache. So it's not very surprising to me at all. It's kind of funny that they think that that's surprising when they've literally been leaking all the rumors for all of the other GPUs showing similar cut downs on the bus width and memory speeds. Now, that being said, the memory speeds are going up now as we looked at them on the 4080, but you know, you still have that cut down memory bus, meaning the overall speed is less, which is kind of the important part. Um, especially for mining a lot of different algorithms. But, you know, it might be a moot point at the end of the day because I don't think people are going to be looking at these cards for mining as much as we get closer to the transition to proof of stake for Ethereum. The proof of work to proof of stake transition, important notes for Hive on pool users. So, hey guys, this is happening. This is basically if you're mining on Hive on Pool, what's going to happen and how it functions for your particular setup. So pay attention. Around seven, September 15th of 2022, the proof of work mining phase of Ethereum will end. After this date, it will no longer be possible to connect your miner to the Hive on ETH pool and mine Ethereum. We've added a countdown to the website already. And you can actually see that countdown if you go over to my earnings here. If you were on there, they have it right here. Countdown being 16 days and 55 minutes as of right now. So this is what's happening. It's real. It's becoming more and more real, guys. Together, we've created one of the best pools worldwide. Sadly, this era has ended, but we know the most incredible technical innovations are ahead. Check out the answers to the most frequently asked questions regarding the proof of work to proof of stake transition. What are the conditions for funds withdrawals before the merge? We fully covered the transaction fees for the Polygon network. Withdraw the funds with no transaction fees with a 0.0025 ETH minimum threshold on mainnet withdrawal with no transaction fees when the following two conditions are met. The minimum balance is 0.2 ETH and the gas prices are equal to or less than 80 GUE. Note, payouts will remain on hold until both conditions are met. Set your own threshold and gas price limit and cover the transaction fees yourself through mainnet. The minimum threshold for this option is 0.0025 ETH. What will happen if the mind uh, what will happen to the mind coins after the merge? If you mind more than 0.0025 ETH, you can withdraw the funds within 20 days from the date of the merge, which will happen around September 15th. Important note, after 20 days from the date of the transact transition, there will be no way to request a payout. So you guys basically on Hive on Pool have 20 days from the actual transition date, which is expected on September 15th. So make sure to basically request your payout and you have to have over 0025 ETH. So try to time that out properly, right? If you're not one of those larger miners that is mining over 0.0025 ETH a day, then you want to time that out to where once you hit that closest to the merge that you just move to another coin so you don't have to worry about losing your mining funds. Withdraw your funds through the mainnet and cover the transaction fees. In the case of Polygon withdrawals, we will fully cover the trans transaction costs. To get a payout after the transition day, contact their live chat. So if you're having issues, you can contact their live chat or you can email them at b at hiveos.farm. So, you know, are they going to be offering other coins to be mined? And they say Hivon is not just the most extensive crypto mining ecosystem. We've created the best conditions, making mining on the pool as profitable and convenient as possible. And that's not about to change anytime soon. Their new mining options will be a launched shortly. Here they are. You have Ravencoin, Bitcoin, which I have some 
serious questions about. Um, ergo and more. So the big ones here, the big announcements is that Hivon is getting a Ravencoin pool and an Ergo pool. Now we covered that they were getting the Ergo pool not too long ago. They were actually spamming my box this whole weekend while I was sick, telling me to report on the Ravencoin pool. Look, man, I was in bed sick. You guys don't got to ping me all over the place. I'll get to it and cover the news when the news is ready. Please, if you're one of these PR companies, don't spam every single inbox and every single DM. It just makes me kind of annoyed, um, especially when I'm sick. So just, you know, do me a favor. Yes, I'll get through it all. I'll probably catch it before without you ever DMing me in the first place. But if you think I'm missing something, definitely let me know. It's just, um, yeah. Yeah, anyways, they're releasing a Ravencoin pool. What is the future after ETH? Mining has proven to be a viable in or has uh, to be viable and innovative. Uh, we believe in mining. We'll continue developing this industry with our products. Uh, on top of that, financial tools such as staking and more are coming soon. So they are talking about adding staking. I don't know if that's a wise decision. Uh, that could put them in a. I think. A, I wonder. I feel like the business model of running like a. Um, software company is a lot better than getting into financial products. Um, so adding staking would be really kind of, I feel like add a lot of risk to their business. You know, who is already adding staking though, of course, is going to be Bitfly, uh, AKA ethermine.org. And they have their announcement too for what's happening here. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I want to make this very clear too. Ethermine has been the largest Ethereum pool for the longest time. Uh, and we've also covered, though, however, that they participate in not only sanctions, but also in censorship on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, I do not want to see this on, you know, the other networks. So I, I really hope that Ethermine doesn't actually get the the majority of the hash rate to these other small coins that they have announced that they're working on pools for or currently have pools already coming out for them. So I really hope that people fight back against this. Um, but we are going to cover it because we do know that a lot of people are on Ethermine. I just really despise them for their censorship. And I don't think that we should utilize these pools uh, because they are proven to participate in censorship multiple times. Since the start of the Ethereum project, one of the core items was the transition to the consensus mechanism to proof of stake. After seven years of intensive research and development, the mining phase of Ethereum will come to an end on the 15th of September. After this date, it will no longer be possible to mine Ether on the Ethereum network using graphics cards, GPUs, or ASICs. As a consequence of this transition, the Ether mine Ethereum pool will switch to withdraw only mode once the proof of work mining phase is ended. An accurate countdown timer will be available on the miner dashboard. You can continue to mine ether until the countdown has reached zero. This means all ether mine stratum servers will be shut down and you will no longer be able to connect your miner to the Ethereum uh, or ether mine Ethereum pool in order. To receive a final payout for your unpaid balance, it will be possible to trigger a manual payout on your individual dashboard page. It is possible to request a manual payout if your pay uh, ooh, excuse me if your unpaid balance exceeds 0.001 ETH for manual payouts. The transaction fee will be deducted from your unpaid balance. Give me one second, guys. We have a serious bug issue going on here and he keeps flying in front of my face and um, I can't <laughs> go away he keeps flying like literally into my eye while I'm trying to read and I'm like what <laughs> where did you come from I've never had this problem before <laughs> I'm already sick. Just give me a break today, universe. All right. Um, let's get back into this, though. 
if you do wish to continue mining other coins, we suggest one of the other high performance mining pools. So they have added Ethereum Classic. Obviously, they've had Ethereum Classic for a long time. They have Ravencoin. They've had that for quite some time now. They've added Ergo. Just don't even don't just don't do it. And uh, they have Beam now. So as well, which they've had, I think, for a little while, too. So you have those options to mine over there. Furthermore, they will offer a 0% fee promotion during the whole month of September for their classic Ravencoin, Ergo, and Beam mining pools. During the full month, you'll be able to mine on those pools without paying any fees. Of course, they are doing that to, you know, basically get themselves to the top of this page like they are on Ethereum. That away, everybody's like, what's the biggest one? Oh, Ethermine, just going to go over to Ethermine. You know what I mean? And luckily, you know, this isn't playing out in their favor um, across like even Ethereum Classic. I think Poolin's bigger here because, you know, the, the you know, I guess the ASICs support. But, um, you know, like I said, they participate in censorship. So I, I don't want to see that censorship end up moving over to other smaller coins. Um, and I think having a large entity like Ethermine have influence over those larger coins could spell out kind of disaster from the censorship standpoint. So I, I just don't, you know, look, I don't like Ethermine. This just is what it is. Flexpool too, they participate in censorship, so I'm not a big fan of them either. All right, so speaking of censorship and Ethereum and proof of stake, you know, we have a problem, boys. We've been talking about this problem for a long time. Let's sit back, Ugh, relax. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with the way the proof of stake works, essentially you stand up a consensus layer node and an execution layer node, and then you put your coins in there and then basically have 32 ETH that you add in and basically the node will solve a block and then you'll get paid out uh, to that staked node and so on. So those nodes have to be basically hosted somewhere. Well, where they're primarily hosted now is essentially within the large, large um, data centers that are run by cloud hosting service uh, companies such as, of course, Amazon. We actually have a chart here. So um, where there is essentially right now 52% of all the nodes are hosted on Amazon.com. But where things get really interesting is we already have a potential for 20% or 16.9% of these nodes to get shut offline. And this is before we even get to the merge, right? So basically the problem that we are going to see is that this company, Hetzner, which has basically 17% of the total nodes of Ethereum currently running on their network, has basically come out and said, you know, this is a violation of our terms of service, which means they are preparing to just shut this down. They say specifically here in a post uh, that they actually replied to on their official Twitter account and their official Reddit account here, they linked over to this. It says, using our products for any application related to mining, even remotely related, is not permitted. This includes Ethereum. It includes proof of stake and proof of work and related applications. It includes trading. It is true for all of our products except co-location. Even if you just run one node, we consider it a violation of our terms of service. We are aware that there are many Ethereum users currently at Hetzner, and we have uh, been internally discussing how we can best address this issue. If you or any other potential customers or, or are unsure about whether your case use case will violate our terms, please re, uh, reach out to us. There is general support from here. Uh, so you can see the chat icon there and blah, 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 and they go through it. Basically, Miss Katie here said, go ahead and make sure that you are not basically hosting any nodes on their services. 
And that means that basically you have 17% of the Ethereum nodes in violation of the terms of service of uh, Hetzner in particular. And that means that we have essentially the potential for 70% of the nodes to be turned off and moved offline. And unfortunately, where does that probably mean they go? They go? Well, they probably go over to Amazon. Amazon already controls over 51% of the actual nodes on the network. And it'll probably, you know, consolidate from there to another 20%, making it basically the owner of all of that. And then what happens when Amazon decides they want to sense, censor something? Well, they can just tell Ethereum, hey, you need to censor something or we're just going to shut off all of your nodes. It's not good, you know. Let's see if we're back. Reconnection successful. Just need to... Refresh this maybe. I was afraid that somebody cut my line, but I think we're okay. All right, I think we're back. <laughs> censorship. They're like, don't talk about censorship. Censor is to talk about censorship. This is not good though. You know, at the end of the day, We've been saying, we've been talking about all of these issues with Ethereum and it feels like it falls on deaf ears and that is specifically surrounding the merge, right? And things get worse too because the merge may negatively impact DeFi protocols and stable coins. In this report, the transition to proof of stake could decrease stable coin values and shrink lending pools according to DAP Radar. Ethereum's upcoming merge could significantly impact the way DeFi protocols operate atop crypto's most popular decentralized finance chain, according to a new DAP Radar report published Friday. The study focuses on delays that could arise during Ethereum's transition to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism better known as the merge. The long-awaited and often delayed tech upgrade may slow transaction times or create service disruptions across DeFi lending protocols, creating headaches for the platforms, the report said. In turn, this could plunge stablecoin values and shrink DeFi lending pools. Ethereum is host to an ecosystem of decentralized token trading, lending, and yield farming projects that together process billions of dollars in crypto value daily. These DeFi protocols rely on Ethereum's consensus mechanism to function properly for their own services to work. Pedro Herrera, a data analyst at DappRadar, said the merge's negative effect on Ether market supply could affect DeFi liquidity pools even if the transition goes off without a hitch. Quote, if the merge fails to successfully be launched, we will have delays on DeFi protocols that will affect stablecoins, end quote, Herrera told Coindesk. But from the supply dynamics perspective, this can also take a toll on how stablecoins will be used for liquidity pools in the DeFi space and beyond. Ethereum's transition to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism is expected to slow the rate at which new tokens are issued, particularly in the months immediately following the switch. As token issuance slows, the blockchain's token burning mechanism will continue to remove Ethereum or Ether from circulation at the same rate as before the merge. Over time, this could decrease Ether's total market supply. It is also possible that DeFi platforms could experience network downtime as some Ethereum-based protocols lag behind the Ethereum chain in their transitions to the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, the report said. There is risk that the merge will result in technical difficulties such as a timestamp desynchronization between nodes or other technical issues that prevent the proof-of-stake to be in sync after the merge, said Herrera. This could force Ethereum to pause block production or even halt production temporarily as their developers work on the issue. Even so, platforms themselves have projected confidence that the merge will not impact their functionality. Uniswap, a popular trading hub, said its services will continue to work seamlessly throughout the upgrade. Earlier this week, the Ethereum Foundation released an official timeline on the framework for the completion of the merge on September 6th, the Bellatrix upgrade, which kicks off the official transition to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, will activate on the beacon chain. So, 
there you go, guys. Essentially, we are talking about some possible DeFi issues, but Uniswap and the Ethereum devs do not seem to be acknowledging this, this uh, being an issue. They've kind of been doing this along the whole road because even when there was low participation on the previous testnet merge, it was kind of brushed off as well. It's just going to have to be one of those things that we wait and see. And I think that's, you know, a lot of people want predictions. They want to know what you're mining after the merge. They want to know a lot of these things that frankly, we, we don't know. Like there's not going to be an influencer in the mining space that knows if they tell you they know they're lying. None of us are going to know for sure exactly how this plays out or even, and that goes from the move to proof of stake and how well Ethereum will accomplish that move to the performance of other proof of work networks in relation to it, or even the other proof of stake networks like Solana and that, because a lot of what's also going on is like, well, you know, what we're going to see is an increase in the price of competitors to Ethereum. And is that true? Is that not right now? It doesn't look like that's actually playing out to be true, right? Like your Binance, your BNB, your Ethereum and so on. But Ether may continue to lose momentum until the merge is completed and investors want more clarity around the merge and its implications, the bank told clients in a research note. Ether's price jump from mid-July until mid-August may continue to fade as investors seek to better understand the implications of the merge. Ethereum's tech upgrade that will transform, transform into a proof-of-stake network along with future blockchain upgrades, Bank of America said in a note on Friday. In addition, the investment bank expects rival blockchains such as Binance Smart Chain, Tron, Avalanche, and Solana to gain market share uh, until Ethereum overcomes its current headwinds. Investors likely realize that Ethereum's seemingly imminent transition to proof of stake will not address scalability concerns or high transaction fees, Bofa analyst Alkash Saw wrote in a note to clients. Hey, awesome. So large bank investors right here, obviously, you know, people that are typically going to be your um, retail or less knowledgeable around the tech are finally noting that it doesn't address scalability or high transaction fees. Uh, the other note would hopefully be that they are aware that you aren't going to be with, be able to withdraw your Ethereum. There are lots of red flags surrounding Ethereum right now as we speak moving up to the merge. Traders have highlighted that while the merge was likely driving short-term price appreciation in Ether, Ethereum's native token, the long-term outlook for asset, remained muted considering a weak macroeconomic sentiment and Bitcoin technicals pointing to a downside. On Friday, crypto and equity markets slid after the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell Powell's hawkish remarks at the long-awaited keynote address at the Fed's Jackson Hole, Wyoming conference. Bitcoin fell about 4% below 21,000, actually going below 20,000 uh, over the weekend for a while. Now just back up over 20,000, I believe. Yeah. And ETH dropped to 1559, which has actually dropped lower and it did drop below 1500 for a little while. And let's get into that because that is the biggest impact on crypto right now. And you know who's worried about it? Poor little Elizabeth Warren is worried that the Federal Reserve, you know, not the actual performance of the economy or the actual literal definition of a recession, which took place and then they changed the definition of it. No, not that. But the Federal Reserve, who now apparently is the only one they can call whether we're in a... <laughs> Oh, uh, recession or not. She's worried that they're going to put us into, may, may bring the recession. You know, people determine the re recession, not, not mathematics anymore, which is absolute ridiculous and bull crap. Senator Elizabeth Warren spoke on CNN State of the Union on Sunday while speaking with anchor Dana Bash. The senator expressed her worries regarding the Federal Reserve tipping the economy into a recession. Newsflash, it is in a recession. By definition, you, you just changing the definition doesn't actually change the fact that we're in a recession. What you should start being worried about is a depression. That's what you should start being worried about. Her comments come after the Fed J Chair Jerome Powell 
announced that the central bank would continue to raise interest rates in order to fight inflation. According to Senator Warren, the current economic situation stems from supply chain disruptions caused by the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, which cannot be tended to with interest rate hikes. The U.S. has already witnessed two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which is a typical recession sign. However, the state has decided to change how it defines a recession and hence does not share the belief of the classic definition. The Massachusetts senator said, so ridiculous, however, the state has decided to change how it defines a recession. I just... <laughs> That line is so absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, the Massachusetts senator said, I am very worried about this. There is nothing in raising the interest rate. There is nothing in raising the interest rates, nothing in Jerome Powell's tool bag that deals directly with those. And he has admitted as much at a congressional hearings when I've asked him about it. Powell said the Federal Reserve is committed to getting prices down. During a keynote speech in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Powell said that the Fed would continue raising interest rates in an effort to control high inflation numbers. The Fed chair had stated, while higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation, but a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. The Fed has raised the interest rates by 70 basis, 75 basis points following the same increase in June. Nonetheless, the U.S. saw an ease in its July inflation numbers for the first time since April. As per the official data, July CPI numbers stood at 8.5%. Furthermore, Canada, too, recorded a drop in its inflation rate for the first time. Inflation fell to 7.6% in July and 8.1% in June. However, Canada's numbers were still the highest recorded since January of 1983. Well, it is a repeat of that to a certain extent. Meanwhile, Eurozone inflation numbers were at a 25-year high at 8.9%. The UK, on the other, recorded, uh, I guess on the other hand, recorded a 40-year high inflation rate of 10.1%. Goldman Sachs says the UK would enter a recession sometime later this year. So Goldman Sachs is already reporting that the UK is entering a recession sometime later this year, probably already has, if we're looking at this completely objectively. Um, Senator Warren worries that the Fed's hawkish stance will bring in a recession in the US. We're already in a recession. It's two negative, two negative GDP growth uh, quarters in a row, which has happened. So that, that's already happened. So we're, we are in a recession just because they're changing the definition of it doesn't mean that we aren't in one, right? And, and that's important to pay attention to, guys. However, many experts have come forward saying that two consecutive negative growth quarters, oh, it says it right here, do not signal a recession. Yes, by definition it does, just changing the definition doesn't mean that, whatever. U.S. President Biden said the same during his recent speech. And to be fair, like the thing is, is if we're just going to keep changing the definitions and everything, like, I guess, whatever. Um, like, I, I don't know what to do about it. But it doesn't mean that the impact of the economy or of what would be traditionally considered a recession isn't felt across the people. Right. And that is really what it's about. And I think everybody's feeling it right now. Now, obviously, the question is going to be, you know, is it more than likely that they're going to, is it, are they going to define it, I suppose, at this point as a recession? Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said that some pain for the U.S. economy is ahead as the Fed continues to fight rising inflation. On Friday, Powell spoke at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, giving his annual policy speech. 
In the speech, he explains the pain coming to the economy from the central bank as they raise interest. Powell affirms the speech uh, in the speech that the Fed will use our tools forcefully to attack inflation, which has grown to its highest in 40 years. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses, he said in his remarks. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation, but a failure to restore the price stability would mean far greater pain. There have been already four interest rate increases, totaling 2.25 percentage points. However, Powell said this is no place to stop or pause. Powell's speech was much briefer than anticipated, with the focus solely on fighting inflation. Pricing stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve and serves as the bedrock for our economy, he said. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. Markets are awaiting the Fed's next meeting in September, and they will see if the rate-setting Federal Open Market Committee will enact a third consecutive 0.75 percentage point increase. My, uh, pre my and not financial advice, and we'll see what happens here, but my prediction is due to the midterm elections, we're going to see kind of a softening of that down to 0.5% uh, increase, and that should show... I. Look, if everybody's expecting 0.75 and 0.5 comes into play, then that would see a temporary recovery in the markets. It doesn't mean that the markets are actually recovering. It just means that it, it's being manipulated at the end of the day. Uh, that is probably what we will see, though, is 0.5% um, point increase. And that they do say that doing so will hurt the economy as it already battles inflation. However, Powell says that it, uh, it is up to these increases and the central banks to manage the increase in inflation. So that's what we got to deal with. Let's get into mining profitability, though, right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options, including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services, including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yesterday was a pretty good day on mining. I don't know if you guys had a good day as well. Um, but, you know, we essentially ended up here with uh, 0.084 Ethereum, and that's with an average of 4.5 giga hash over the past 24 hours and 4.46 giga hash over the past, or the real time, as it gets hot outside. Uh, especially right now with it being around 12.45 p.m., it's starting to get pretty toasty. It says the expected earnings over the past 20, or the next 24 hours is 0 0.065 Ethereum, which would be 97 U.S. dollars. It's been kind of interesting um, because the payouts have been... I guess the 0 0.06 has been, we've had like a couple days where like August 21st, we had a 0 0.12 payout, which was crazy. And this has been daily. And then we had, yeah, yesterday a 0 0.08 payout. So we had a pretty big day yesterday too, um, which is unexpected, but nice. Obviously we have, like we talked about earlier, we have only 16 days left. Um, I may be hopping off to other stuff sooner than later, you know, um, I don't know right now I'm, I'm not feeling good. So, you know, letting it mine right now is kind of where I'm at until I feel better and then we'll start tinkering some more. 
Um, I can actually feel as we are uh, as we are chatting right now. I'm kind of going downhill, to be honest with you guys. Um, all right, so let's look at 30, 90 numbers on what to mine with corrected Zell hash, Kapow, and Prog Pal numbers, and get this calculated out. We have Ethereum at 257 a day in revenue, a dollar 80 a day after power. Neoxa coming in second at 246 a day in revenue, a dollar 67 a day after power. Ravencoin at 236 a day in revenue, and a dollar 57 a day after power. And we have Xano at 232 a day in revenue, a dollar 52 a day after power. Flux is at 223 a day in revenue, and a dollar 54 a day after power. And Sarah's at 215 a day in revenue, and a dollar 35 a day after power. We have Fira at 211 a day in revenue, and a dollar 37 a day after power. And Conflux at 206 a day in revenue, and a dollar 27 a day after power. Got to scroll down pretty far to find our little Ergo, which is a dollar sixty-three a day in revenue and a dollar a one a day after power. If we take a look at the charts, Ethereum Classic is at forty-seven terahash a second. It really hasn't gone up that much more uh, since the initial A10 kind of pump off. I think maybe that pop off happened. Yeah, here, and then we had the, the second big one. It was on the second big one where we went up to 47. Um, there is more hash rate potential just from the A10s alone. Because when we looked at Ethereum, you know, we had that big drop off. And it's down to 940 terahash a second. We were expecting you another, another 20 terahash a second to move over to Ethereum Classic. But it also appears Ethereum Classic can't really handle that right now either and the price isn't reflecting in it you know it is one of the few that has gone up in the past seven days so that is a fair point but you know this is kind of where we're at as far as all that goes let's go ahead and take a look at a few other coins bitcoin as always just to kind of get an idea of what's happening there Bitcoin is at 236 exahash a second. Which is up about, what, four exahash a second from the last time I checked, which would have been like last Tuesday. Flux around 1.7 mega solutions a second last Tuesday is now has skyrocketed to 2.13 mega solutions a second. And the price over the past seven days has looked really good at 27%, up 27%. It's over a dollar per flux right now. That's one of the highest pumping ones we've seen here recently. Ravencoin down 5.15% and is up 0.3 terahash at 2.72 terahash. Neoxa, a lot of people's new favorite coin, been up over about 166% over the past week, which has been insane. A huge pump in the amount of hash rate going on to the network and a whole bunch of new pools coming up and popping up for Neoxa. Of course, it is easy to build pools for Neoxa due to it being a fork of Ravencoin. We'll have to take, keep a close eye on Neoxa. Unfortunately, Kapow is a little difficult to run. So, you know, depending on your geographical location, you may or may not be able to mine it easily. All right, so let's take a look at Ergo. Up 7% over the past seven days. And currently at... 16 tera hash a second it had a big spike here that was actually a misreporting pool you can see down there the Walesburg pool uh, basically had a, an API error that caused that I did already talk to some people from the ergo team to verify that and caspa Caspa has 69 tera hash on the network, 34 of that coming from pools, and it is up 8% over the past week. 
Oh, there you go. Mining pool profitability on Ethereum last 90 days ZET in first Ether mine in second crazy pool in third. Last 60 days ZET in first nano pool in second F2 pool in third. Last 30 days ZET in first nano pool in second crazy pool in third. Last 21 days ZET in first crazy pool in second nano pool in third. Last 14 days crazy pool in first mining pool up in second nano pool in third. Last seven days, ZET in first, crazy pool in second, mining pool hub in third. Last three days, crazy pool in first, ZET in second, mining pool hub in third. And for the last day, ZET in first, mining pool hub in second, and nano pool in third. I guess once we go through the merge, we'll just be looking at the ETC version of this <laughs> and going through it because we will no longer have access to Ethereum. ASIC miner profitability. We have the Ant Miner E9 falling to $50 flat, pretty much. It might go down below $50 a day. And that's due to, of course, the decrease in the price of Ethereum here, even running up to the merge. Ant Miner L7 is at $18.18 a day, down below the $20 a day it usually sits around. The entire mining market appears to be down, including ASICs is kind of the moral of the story here. We got the Gold Shell HS3 handshake at $10.25 a day, beating out the KD6, which has now dropped down below $10 a day at $9.85 a day. Oof, that is rough. That is really rough. That is really, really rough. KD5 is at $5.66 a day. Oh, man. And the Antminer S19 Pro is actually up today compared to last week to $5.47 a day. Let's get into questions and answers. Remember, Super Chats are never required. Always appreciated first to be answered because they're the easiest to read. Definitely could use some as well, not going to lie. We are in uh, lots of trouble probably with my revenue thanks to um, being sick for almost a whole week. And um, that doesn't get much better when I look at, I was supposed to start a job last week uh, working nights and um, so I'm, I, look, my birthday was Friday too. I had a really, I've had a really rough month guys. It's pretty rough. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have that job still. Um, hopefully I will, but, um, doesn't look like it right now. It's not like much you can do. So I'll, I'll probably work on getting another, another job. Uh, start working on that when I feel better. Um, so, you know, revenues down. Luckily the miners kept cranking away, which is definitely helpful, but you know, it is what it is. And then uh, today, if I feel a little bit better later, it's really hot right now. I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel kind of hot, but we'll uh, probably be on Twitch. I've already been kind of, I've kind of been feeling good enough to play games here lately. So I've been playing some games and there's some other topics I want to cover as well. Paul D says, ask have a tech smaller interest rate increases until after the November election. That's what I was thinking as well. Some people are saying even as low as 0.25, which is interesting. I think it'll be 0.5. Uh, Gabe says, at Son of a Tech, uh, any general reasons for GPU faults? I should have plenty of power in a rig, but when I enable 6 to 6 cards, I get GPU fault on DAG. But if I disable uh, one card, then it works. Um, Flux, for example. Uh, increase the amount of system memory would be my guess, Gabe. Or increase your swap file. Paul D says, at Son of Attack, if you were a Pokemon, which Pokemon would you be? I don't know. Right now, Charmander. Um, Chadwick says, at Son of Attack, what's up, man? Can we look at Pixie Boot uh, for our next adventure? Uh, Hive OS, you mean Hive OS Pixie Boot? It's pretty interesting. I've been messing with it, but I, I haven't pulled, uh, built out a, a full VM yet. I want, I want to finish my, uh, my other, my new host. 
Digital Fortress Mining, thanks for the $5 super chat. Says, not having the best of luck myself, but I hope you feel better and things start looking better soon. Thank you, good sir. Slick Mechanical says, as son of a tech, I started solo mining beam in, uh, on the two miners pool and it has three share difficulty ports. What is the relationship between share difficulty and finding a block while solo mining? Um, so the difficulty is, well, I mean, just like it says, how difficult the shares are going to be. The more you hash rate you have, the higher the difficulty um, you want to do in general and the lower difficulty you want to do for course the lower the hash rate so um for example like uh, and this is all going to be like based on different network stuff and there's there you should talk to some people probably within their particular discords and so on to determine what's best for you but like on ergo when i was playing around with it i did like variable difficulty that started at like 0.9 um and then at one point i tried just like static difficulty which was at like 256 and the static difficulty found like three blocks and the variable difficulty never found anything. Now, is it probably due to that? I don't know. I can't say for sure. Um, you know, there is luck that plays into a lot of that stuff as well, but there is an impact from difficulty um, when it's being set and how the network interprets it and so on. And every network's different. So I would have to know more about beam as well too, because I don't really know enough about Beam and how it functions. Um, SFE Matt says, at Son of a Tech, uh, have you checked out the Ohm Connect? They pay you every hour. You shut off your energy consuming devices. No, I don't know what Ohm Connect is necessarily. I will have to check it out. Uh, Chadwick says, as I'm a tech pixie for Hive OS, I uh, built a new host, 7 terabytes with 600 gigabyte of flash storage. Nice. So you want to pixie set up so I can ditch the flash drives for your motherboards. Yeah, it's super nice. Like the uh, ability of Hive OS to just like, you don't need any drives at all. You just boom, boot to a network image. Um, the best part is, is like you can set up like some redundancy there as well from what I saw too. Um, and that means that you pretty much never have to install Hive again, right? For any new rig deployments. And it's always going to pop up and just boom, be done. I don't know. It, it looks great. Like a great option. The only kind of downside is making sure you have like pixie boot enabled and it will auto boot to pixie boot so um that's going to be motherboard dependent right so some motherboards will only boot to pixie with like a prompt right so um you'll have to hit like the f12 or whatever when it pops up it'll say do you want to boot to boot to pixie you have to press enter um so but some motherboards will allow you to just say auto boot kind of like you would do a USB drive, which is kind of like the biggest, um, I think hindrance depending on like your environment, the rest of your environment and what motherboards you have and so on. Bill says at son of attack are most of the exchanges stopping transactions on ERC 20 coins like Coinbase. Um, it doesn't look like it. It looked like, I mean, even Uniswap said they were going to function through the merge. They seem to feel like, and, and obviously that's not a centralized exchange. It's a de decentralized exchange. Um, but they said they're going to go straight through. Sammy says, son of a tech, have uh, you figured out a mining strategy after ETH? No, nobody's going to have that until it happens, Sammy. It's just that's the way it is. I talked about that earlier. Anybody that says they have one, I mean, I, I, they're, I mean maybe they're not lying, but they're just kind of lying to themselves at the, at the very best. Um, Miller Mining Company says, as son of a tech, uh, glad to have you back. Yes, sir. Here's to a speedy recovery. I am trying to stay hydrated. I do need to go get more water, though. We are running out. Ooh. 
Got a $20 super chat from Waz. $20, thank you, sir. Says, let's all chip in on the super chat train. Thanks, but that's not necessarily necessary. So, I, 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 I like the support, though, in the spirit. Doc says, at Son of a Tech, uh, are you ex uh, expecting to run the farm hard when the weather cools down? I'm, you know, there's a part of me that expects that I'm just going to shut this whole thing down and pull my rigs out and wait. Well, I don't even have to pull my rigs out, but I mean, it depends. So if I'm in a position where I can't afford rent anymore, then I'll be pulling the rigs out. I don't know. It depends on how fast I can get spun up uh, working. Chad says, one strategy I heard is to power off rigs and evaluate options for 30 days. I think that there will be small coins you can still mine that nobody else is mining, if that makes sense. The unlisted type stuff that I would be looking at. Like things that nobody's paying attention to. Like, I think it's probably the time to spec mine, right? But once again, like, I don't know. Like, we could hit it, Ethereum Classic finds price discovery, and it's like, boom, you're done. We can speculate. I, I mean, the problem with speculation is like, it just, I mean, I guess it's good for live content. Like I could just drone on all day about speculation opportunities, but at the same time, like, I don't know that I really want to do that because that's all it is, right? Uh, Doc says, "Ask Samatech would love to see you do some spots on coins people aren't paying attention to. The problem is, is if I tell you, then it's already, <laughs> you know." Rack O says, "Ask Samatech, hey, what do you use to find the cheapest GPU prices? I don't really use anything right now." Um, trying to find the most accurate one you've tested along with GPU hop seems to be the most accurate. What do you use? I don't use anything right now because I'm not really buying anything right now. Carlos Marcello, thanks for the $20 super chat says feel better, man. I agree with the super chat train idea. <laughs> um, take it as a birthday present. Chadwick says, as I'm a tech, end of the day, need to pay bills. So small coins is out for me. Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I think I should have put my whole farm on something like Caspa way back when I was putting stuff on Caspa, you know. Blackwell's Crypto, thanks for the $5 super chat. Says top three spec coins to mine. I only talk about those. I don't have any right now, to be honest, but I only really talk about those on the locals page at sonofatech.locals.com. The Action Stack says, As Son of a Tech, win 10 rig, 6 RTX, no issues for two years. Recently, one with three ASUS 2060s, say, Mem, uh, too low for DAG, reduced to 99.79% or something and dropped from 32 mega hash to 28 mega hash. No, I don't know. I haven't heard of that problem. Hmm. Chadwick says that Rabbit thinks CPU mining will be most profitable. I saw that video. DMC says, Ask Time Attack, uh, boss, it's okay to keep 
ETH at Polygon Chain at the time of the merge as Weth. Um, I don't know for sure. Who knows? Like, if shit breaks, shit breaks. But I don't think it'll matter if it's ETH or Weth. I mean, maybe, possibly. We talked about it a little bit. With the negatively impacting like protocols, I've seen reports of like Geth having issues. Um, but I don't know. I would assume like you're at risk no matter what if you have any ETH on anything. You know what I mean? or anything on ETH. All right, boys, that's well over an hour. Chat slowed down. I'm going to be over on twitch.tv slash blind run in a little while. Uh, so if you guys want to come over and hang out, there's the link to that. Um, I think I'll probably be playing some games. Also talking about a couple of political articles and pieces that really um, I didn't want to talk about over here, I suppose. And we got some reaction to some videos and stuff like that to go on. So... Thanks everybody for hanging out. I'm glad to be back on the crypto mining show. Um, I might take a nap too. I feel like that took a lot of energy. So um, I got like a, you know, I just feel, I'm stuck. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Thanks guys. Um, and then also we have more CASPA hash rates to test as well. But I'll see you next Tuesday.